Good evening and welcome to the Locking Your Success Trade and Market Update for Easter Sunday, March 31st, 2013. Hope you had a great Easter today. Before we get going, just a reminder that the presentation is for educational purposes only. We are not financial advisors or broker dealers and therefore we cannot give specific investment recommendations. Any trades or results covered in this presentation may or may not be live trades. In the event we had a computer simulated trade, the results are believed to be as accurately represented as possible. However, since the trades may not have been live executed, some of the market prices and so forth may vary. Also, the risk of loss in trading options is significant, so please be aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades, and make sure you thoroughly understand the characteristics and risks of standardized options documentation available at your broker. If you're watching this on YouTube, please come and visit our trading blog and make sure you join our mailing list. The Rock Trading System was released last week, and I'd like to let you know that I really appreciate the tremendous amount of support I received from everyone who bought the product. I'm just blown away by all your wonderful comments. Thank you. Thank you. I really enjoy them, and, and please keep them coming. Uh, let's see. Coming up in the future, we're looking at the M21 Checkmate Trading System, which is probably going to be done sometime in the fall. Prior to that, we also have the SSS Trading Series, which I'm planning for June 2013. And we have a bunch of other programs in the in, in the queue also so it's going to be great if you'd like uh, more information on some of this stuff we have uh, bearishbutterfly.com you can look at bearish butterfly and we have m3options.com to look at the m3 if you, if you want to go for the rock that can be found on either the bearish butterfly or, or, or m3 page down at the pie down at the bottom okay let's take a look at the markets uh, last week when we were talking we were kind of expecting more sideways movement, which we definitely got. Possibly a push up if the SPX was going to go for all time highs, which it actually did. It, uh, the previous all time closing high was 1565.15. We closed up at uh, 1569.19. And intraday, we were a little bit higher than that. We did not hit the all time intraday high, which is 1576.09. It'll be interesting to see if we take a shot at that. I can't imagine the short term paid, uh, traders not taking a shot at that and trying to close the market over that, but we shall see if uh, we have, uh, you know, the pressures are under a little bit of pressure again this week as they were last week. Didn't seem to make a whole lot of difference last week except for keep us in a sideways trading range. And, you know, even though we did have a breakout over the old highs in the SPX, uh, I believe we had one in the uh, Dow also. We broke out from this pattern, and we had a breakout uh, almost. Yeah, we had a breakout in the index also. So we have three indices that broke higher. I don't believe this is really going anywhere. I think we continue to stay in a sideways trend for a little while, and I, I imagine we, we're going to break back down into here at some point, uh, probably during the week, even though, like I said, we... we I wouldn't be surprised at all. As a matter of fact, I'd expect short-term traders to push us up into the intraday high here, at least intraday, and go higher. And from there, we're probably going to break back down in here and run sideways. I think there's a lot of geopolitical stuff going on, and the market is awfully overbought. I don't think anybody really wants to sell. So that, would, that should limit any uh, sell downs to previous support levels on the SPX, which is down right in this trend line area here. Uh, you know, a, a deep sellback would be down to the 1520 area, which is our 50-day moving average, would be as far down as I would expect the market to go if the market uh, really decides it wants to, to reset a support point. Uh, I, I would be surprised if it even did that, though. I, like I said, I'm expecting a little bit more bullishness to sideways uh, type of a move here. Now the same thing. We broke higher. I would expect uh, us to come in and, and hit this trend line at some point, probably ne this week or next week. The NDX continues to be in this really, really tight sideways range, which is uh, you know, really good for uh, market neutral traders because this is about as neutral as it gets. If you're not, uh, if you're doing market neutral trades and you're not winning on the NDX, then you're doing something wrong here because it's uh, it's been really simple for all year. It's been a really nice trade all year for this uh, for this NDC here. And the Russell is the only one guy who didn't break out. Again, I'm still considering or, or would be surprised if we get too much upward movement here. I would think any upward move would be contained to the 970 level. Uh, I don't even think it's going that high. Uh, it's been a little bit relatively weak compared to everything else. If uh, we get a harsh breakout in the SPX, and then maybe it pushes us higher. But uh, otherwise, I would expect continued sideways movement in the range here. I would think any pullback would be uh, limited to the 920 area, 
any bounce would be limited to the 970, 980 tops. So in general, what we're expecting in the markets is sideways. Let's uh, just hop over to our trades. Really, not a lot has happened. I will start with the April M3 because that got the most action this week. And earlier in the week, we had on the 25th. I backed out of that initial adjustment I did. If you remember right, uh, back in the on the 19th, we had a fairly good downsize move, and I did a protectionary move by buying this uh, 939.40 put spread five times. I sold out of that on the 25th, and on the 28th, I did three. I sold three 940, 950 put spreads. And if you take a look at the position, it now consists of uh, 10 long 970s, sh three short 950s, seven short 940s, 10 short 920s, and 10 long 870s with two long 920 calls. Our delta is in range. This is as of uh, 3.30 on Thursday. Our theta is positive, our vega is negative, and if we take a look at our graph, it looks like this. So it's looking really nice if we continue in a sideways range. If this uh, shoots up, we will continue to push the edge of the tent out. So this is a nice looking trade so far this month. If we take a look at our April bearish butterfly, this is actually back to break even. Our delta uh, is within limits. Our theta is nice and positive and our vega is really nice and negative. If we take a look at this position, it looks like this. There were no adjustments to this this week. I continue to be in 10 940 call butterflies and 10 960 call butterflies. We are in into expiration rules, so we are going to be monitoring our delta and keeping it within our uh, expiration rules range. Uh, this looks this looks good. Any any kind of reasonable market movement, it should be a good trade for the month. And let's see here. We have the uh, the rock trade for April. Which consists, uh, which got one adjustment this week, and it just happened to be on Thursday, and it was very minor. The delta was getting a little high with the creep up in the market, and I ended up adding one 970 call butterfly right here, uh, midday on Thursday, to bring myself back into range. Delta is actually a little bit high coming into the close, also, but I left it alone for the weekend, and this is what this position looks like. Everything's going really well here, and let's see, we're up a couple thousand dollars, so it's looking nice. Also have the May Bearish Butterfly, which got no adjustments. It's sitting up at $380. I do have a Delta Theta Ratio problem, and it's just simply neglect. I have too many trades going on, which is why I didn't do anything to this. Technically, I should have rolled this to... Well, let me take a look. Maybe I shouldn't have done anything. Actually, uh, I am incorrect. I should not have done anything. I'm sitting where I should be. I, according to guidelines, I can't roll this till the market hits 960. So we're sitting here in this position until the market hits 960 up in here, and then I can roll this forward to 960. As of right now, um, our, we do have a delta theta ratio issue. However, we do uh, just kind of live with it until the price of the Russell gets high enough. Uh, let's see, our two condors are our May, uh, this is our May B condor here. They are currently in minus 45 delta, nice and positive theta, a gain of about $1,600. Position looks like this here. Let me just back this out a little bit. So this looks really nice. If uh, the market continue, would continue to creep up on us, it would be really nice. However, I'm not really expecting that. So we may end up starting to widen the straddle out a little bit if, uh, if too much time goes by. But as of right now, everything looks nice. If we take a look at our April V Condor, oh, and there were no adjustments to the May V Condor. If we take a look at our April V Condor, this is up about $2,900, minus 52 Delta, 101 Theta position looks like this. This is going very well also. Again, I would like the market to continue to creep up for this specific trade. Uh, and I do not think it's going to do that. If the market sits too much longer, I will start, uh, just like on the other one, we'll start continuing to ride, uh, widen the straddle out. See if we bring our expiration line up over 3,000 and probably expire it in that range. Uh, but so uh, all the trades are doing very well this month. 
uh, it'll be nice if we continue to get some sideways movement here, get a bit of a break from the markets for a change. However, you know, whatever happens, we will deal with it, and I'm sure everything will work out just fine. So that's all I have for now. We'll keep it nice and short for this Easter Sunday. Hope everybody has a fantastic week trading, and I'll keep you up to date with any changes. Thank you, and good night.